But I want still not ready. <sighs> okay, you have the other video, right? Just let's play the first few minutes of that one. Then we will see maybe I can explain this thing a little better. Because I am really concerned. I'm really concerned and I'm, I'm going to work. The first of these disciplines. I said, and your business. I'm, I'm, I'm in charge of ushering in church. On Saturday morning, I pick up my checklist. What are the things I need to make sure are in place? If they're not in place, I have enough time to fix it. Ask who's coming, who's not coming, who can make it early. What are you doing? You are anticipating trouble ahead of yourself. And so you're taking care of it. But you ask our people. We, we are just a funny set of people. We actually think that those who are making it don't have something they're following. There's a man called... Uh, is it a true Gwande? He, he's, a, he's a medical doctor. Harvard trained medical doctor. Harvard trained. He began to check and began to check and began to check and said, why are we still having problems in the medicine that people are dying prematurely? People are still, you know? So you know what he started to do? He started to come up with a medical checklist. He said he studied skyscrapers and found out that less than 0.02% of skyscrapers fall. He noticed aircrafts, 0. something percent of aircrafts crash. He noticed, um, so he said, wait a minute, these people have something, they follow a checklist. A checklist is not that you don't know what you are doing, it's to remind you of what you need to do. So he decided to come up with a very simple medical checklist. They tested it in 43 hospitals from third world countries in Kenya all the way to the most sophisticated hospitals in America. And it cut down deaths by 43%. It cut out surgical mistakes by 37%. And you, say, you sit down, half of deaths were reduced because somebody followed the checklist. Because the most difficult part of life is not the strategy, it's the execution. Who doesn't want to build a house? Who doesn't want to have a car? Who doesn't want to run a successful business? Who doesn't want to have a wonderful marriage? It's everybody here wants that. But the work is not in the idea. The work is in the process of getting it done. Are you here? So for today, we'll play the video. I think you have about four or five minutes, I mean, ten minutes left. Have you, have you gotten the other video? Good. So we'll play this video. And then I will show you. I told you to put my PowerPoint on this side. And it hasn't been put. I'll show you that they're scriptural. I developed, what is, I developed a, a, a PowerPoint on my Facebook page. Sorry, on, on, um, I did the PowerPoint here for TBN in 2013. I came back from Detroit. That's when I first learned about the four disciples of execution in detail. And so I decided to put a PowerPoint up on what on the platform called SlideShare. Didn't think much about it. Didn't think much about it. Left it. I thought my most popular slide on SlideShare was change or die. A few weeks, a, a few months ago, I just wanted to go and check it out. And I found out that my PowerPoint has been viewed 18,000 times. This PowerPoint, 18,000 times it's been downloaded about a thousand two hundred times on the internet people see their need for it except the people you're putting it in front of this powerpoint if i'm lying google it let's play the video is it, is, are you ready, Chief? I want to continue from where you stop. Don't go backwards. Are you ready? What happened? You were playing it before now. Why did you take it off? Well, who's 
controlling the slide, do you? Move forward while we're waiting for him so that we won't waste it. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Just keep going. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, so let's go back. I'm waiting for him to be ready, so while we're doing it, let's look at it. Go, go, go back. Yeah, 70% of strategic failure were due to poor execution, not bad strategy. What is killing us in this country is nothing but execution. The president was giving awards out in Abuja. That embarrassment I still can't get over. They ran out of awards. And they went to the president in front of all the glaring cameras and said, we have run out of awards. I said, if I were the one, I would go and borrow an award from the people that have gotten an award before. So that the president is not embarrassed. I don't know if you get the point that I'm making. And put it back on the line. So that, no, who will know? Then I will apologize. We will send you your award later. With all the money and resources at Asorok, they ran out. Because I can understand, the presidency was probably adding more people to the list. At the last minute. Uh, you didn't give me an award, sir. Okay, put his name. You didn't give me an award, sir. Put his name. And they didn't tell the people in the protocol. But even if that is the truth, come on. We were running a football match in Liberty Stadium. Pastor, pastor. I'm trying to, I mean, how embarrassed would you have been as a Nigerian? Liberty Stadium. You have backup generator. You have NEPA. And NEPA went in the middle of a World Cup match. Ha! It doesn't bother us. There is an airport in America where every five to ten seconds a plane takes off. A day. He threw a two, three planes take off a minute. Do you hear what I said? In Nigeria, 25 planes take off in a day. We have more crashes here. is wrong with us and then somebody comes and tells you this is how to execute you say no let me pray let me fast it will change execution are you ready chief of army staff i'm not going to watch it from the beginning just move it forward yeah are you ready now I, am i making any sense to anybody this morning please listen to me it's up to you. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. Um, George, um, what's his name? Who was the, the defense minister for George Bush? George W. Bush. What's his name? He's a black man. Colin Power. Colin Power said this. He said he's, he's always amazed that Christians are always running away from problems. He said because people who are paid are those who are problem solvers. I don't know if you get the, you, you don't get the point I'm making. You get up in the morning, you have a problem, you pray. God, take it away. But the people who are paid the highest in the world are people who solve problems. So what God presented to you as an opportunity, you turned it into a prayer point. Sorry now, you came to church this morning. Why execution is as difficult as it is. Within every organization, there's a clash or a rub between two forces. The one is what we call the whirlwind or the day job. This is all the energy and attention that's needed to keep the organization running today. This is what keeps your doors open. It maintains the operation. It's what people will often refer to as the real work. The other force is the goals for moving the organization forward. These two things are not the same. They're both absolutely necessary and they do not get along. Ask yourself this question. Would the people in my organization still be busy even if we didn't have any goals for moving the organization forward? Think about the strategies, the initiatives, the priorities that you've seen die. What killed them? Was it incompetence? Was it defiance? The vast majority of the cases that we see, they are choked or starved by the whirlwind, by the urgency of the day-to-day. -day. People are not stupid and they're not lazy. They're busy. The primary characteristic of the whirlwind is urgency. It acts on you. The goals for moving the organization forward are important.
important. They never have the same immediacy or urgency as the whirlwind does. You have to act on them. When urgency and importance clash, urgency wins. Here's the bottom line. The challenge with execution is not simply executing on a goal. It's executing on a goal in the midst of a 100 mile an hour whirlwind. The four disciplines of execution exist solely for the purpose of helping an organization execute on its most important goals in the midst of that whirlwind. Even though these disciplines are logical and straightforward, they are not easy to implement or maintain in an organizational setting. They say easy, they do hard. And whether you're running a very simple organization or a very complex one, the good news is they always work. The first of these disciplines is to focus on the wildly important. If a team or an organization has two to three goals, in addition to the whirlwind, they're likely to achieve two to three goals. That same team has four to ten goals, they're likely to achieve only one or two. This is called the law of diminishing returns and it is real. That same team has 11 to 20 goals. They're not likely to accomplish anything outside of the whirlwind. At 11 to 20 goals, they can't even hear you, let alone execute. Now, while this is a simple enough idea, it's very difficult for most organizations to adhere to. Leaders are typically the ambitious and the creative type. Now, the problem with that type is they always want to do more and not less. And there will always be more good ideas than there is capacity to execute. Because of that, organizations have to say no to good ideas, and that's very counterintuitive. They like to say no to the bad ideas, not the good ideas. Said differently, in the words of Jim Collins, the enemy of the great is the good. These critical few goals that are in addition to the whirlwind are called the wildly important goals, or WIGs. These are the goals that make all the difference. Failure to achieve these goals renders any other achievement inconsequential. Here are a few of the critical rules that apply to discipline one. First, no team can have more than one to two wigs at the same time. Second, the sub wig can be different than the parent wig, but must ensure the success of the parent wig. It's not enough for the sub wigs to align or support. The sub wig or the battle must ensure the success of the parent wig or the war. And finally, third, each wig must have a clear finish line, a statement of success, from X to Y by when. Too often goals are defined in vague general terms with a variety of measures that only dilute clarity and accountability. In the 1950s, our struggling space program had the goal of leading the world in space exploration, and that was a fine goal, and there were lots of measures associated with it, but there was very little focus, clarity, or accountability. In 61, Kennedy said something very different. He said, we will put a man on the moon by the end of the decade and return him safely home. When he stated that from X to Y by when, he drew a line in the sand. Accountability went up. And interestingly enough, so did morale and engagement. Within every organization that we work, whenever we move from a half a dozen or a dozen of these we kinda ought to goals, to one or two no matter what, there is a tangible change in morale and engagement. There's a little switch in people's heads called game on. In discipline one, we wanna throw that switch. The second discipline is to act on the lead measure. Once a clear finish line is established in discipline one, the team knows how it wins or loses. It has its lag measure. The key to execution, though, is to act on the lead measure. Now, while lag measures measure the goal, lead measures measure something that leads to the goal and something the team can influence. A lead measure is predictive of goal success, but is also influenceable by the team. This is the golden rule of execution, focusing on a predictive and influenceable measure. In a word, it is leverage. For instance, if you want to lose weight, the lag measure is weight loss. The lead measure, and there's two of them, you got it, right? Diet, calories taken in, and exercise, calories burned. They're predictive of weight loss, and they're also more directly influenceable. 
Here's the problem. Human beings fixate on lag measures rather than lead measures, even though the lag measure isn't directly influenceable. And they do this for two reasons. First, because the lag measure matters. That's the thing you want, or that's the thing you're accountable for. The second reason people fixate on lag measures is because lag data is always easier to get. All right, let's go back to the weight loss thing. If you've got scales in your bathroom, right, you can step on those scales and in two seconds you know what the data is telling you. But you probably have no idea how many calories you've eaten today and figuring out how many calories you've burned is even more difficult. Not only are lag measures easier to measure, half the time they'll chase you down. One of our clients affectionately refers lag measures as oh crap measures because when you look at them you're either saying oh cool or oh crap but it doesn't feel like you have a lot of influence over them as a matter of fact if you feel like luck is playing a role in your career it's because you're looking at lag measures lead measures are different for every team and every wig for example out of stocks by reduction in accidents qualified prospects driving a monthly sales number, improved preventative maintenance and full crews, driving improved plant production, number of one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with call center reps to drive a customer satisfaction number. Your lead measures aren't always that easy to identify and they're not always that easy to track either. This is the main reason why narrowing the focus in discipline one is so critical. If a given team is trying to impact half a dozen goals simultaneously, it becomes almost impossible to identify and track that many lead measures, particularly in the face of the whirlwind. The third discipline is to create a compelling scoreboard. The purpose of that scoreboard is to hold the lead and lag measures from discipline one and discipline two. And without a scoreboard, it won't take people very long to forget what the lead measure and the lag measure actually were. Now, creating a scoreboard isn't very, very tricky. Creating a compelling scoreboard, that's the difficult part. It needs to feel at least a little like a game. And to do that well, there are four rules. First, they've got to be simple. Think about how many football statistics there are and how many are actually on the scoreboard itself. This is about creating a player's scoreboard, not a coach's scoreboard. Second, it has to be visible to the players. Third, it has to show both the lead and the lag measure. I have to see that I can affect the score, that's the lead part, and that it's making a real difference, that's the lag part. And finally, most importantly, you can tell immediately if you are winning or if you are losing. One of our clients, a manufacturing company operating in North Carolina, made a very interesting observation. They realized after doing this that every employee in the plant could tell you on any day whether they were winning or whether they were losing on their top priorities. This is fascinating to us because most executives can't provide you with that information. By the way, that same plant is also producing twice the profits with less people than all of its sister plants. Preview. We also believe that the single biggest contributor to employee morale is whether or not a person feels they're winning at work. Just go back in your own life and think about the time when you were most engaged or most excited about what you were doing professionally and see if at that time you didn't feel like you were winning. Disciplines one, two, and three create a winnable game for a person. Not just a game, but a winnable game. Preview. Discipline four, create a cadence of accountability is where the real execution takes place. This discipline revolves around a 20-minute meeting that happens every week for every team that owns a wildly important goal. It happens at the same time each week, and in this meeting, you do not discuss the whirlwind, even if the building's on fire, and every person on the team shows up thinking about the very same critical question. What are the one to three things that I can do this week in order to impact the scoreboard? In this 15 to 20 minute wig session, each person takes just about two minutes to review three things. First, I report on last week's commitments. Did I do what I said I was going to do? Second, I review the scoreboard. Is the lead measure moving? And if so, is the lag measure responding? And finally, third, based on what the scoreboard is telling me, what am I going to do in the upcoming week 
to impact those lead measures. As you look at this week of time, you can see the yellow blocks are those objectives where we're trying to have an impact on the lead measure. And the blue, as you can guess, that's the whirlwind. Now, if you were to remove those yellow blocks, you can see, and you know from experience, it will not stay white. It'll turn blue, and it'll turn blue fast. The four disciplines is a process for driving the yellow into the blue. Folks, this is what execution looks like. One of our clients from a Fortune 500 company put it a very interesting way. She said, we don't have dragons swooping down, knocking us off our priorities. What we have are gnats every day with the gnats in our eyes. And we look back over six months and we haven't done any of the things we said we were going to do. The fourth discipline is gnat repellent. Let's take an example and walk it all the way through. Let's say that Bob is the manager over a number of crews in a construction company where the wildly important goal is safety. And in his slice of the meeting, he's going to do those three things. First, he's going to report on the commitments he made last week, the commitments he either completed or didn't complete. Second, he's going to look at the scoreboard, and this is the critical part. On the scoreboard, he'll see the lag measure or the wildly important goal, which in this case is the incident report. And here, it's not moving at all. It's being stubborn. He also looks at the lead measure, which the organization has said is compliance to eight safety standards. Now, as he looks at the lead measure, he can tell that while most things are okay, crews 9, 11, and 13 are not wearing their protective eyewear when they use the saws. The third thing he does in the meeting is he makes commitments for the upcoming week. And of course, Based on the board, he commits to talk to the foreman of crews 9, 9, 1, and 13, make sure they've got the eyewear, let them know it's not optional to use them. Now, here's a bet that Bob is making. He's betting that those activities will have an impact on the lead measure. It's a pretty good bet. The company as a whole is betting that the lead measure of compliance with the eight safety standards will drive the lag measure of incident rate. And that turned out to be a very very good bet. From this example, you can see how critical it is that the lead measure be both influenceable and predictive. A lot of organizations use the four disciplines of execution as a sort of sane alternative to the way they typically implement their strategic plans. And you can see from this example that no matter how detailed the strategic plan might be, and we've seen some very detailed ones, that no strategic plan is going to tell Bob that on week 27 he needs to talk to crews 9, 11, and 13. The planning happened with the four disciplines happens every week. It's just-in-time planning. And it's planning that's responsive to what the lead measure is telling you. The four disciplines of execution, in short, do three things for every team. First, it provides simple, direct clarity around strategic priority. It separates the wildly important goal from the whirlwind and creates a very clear line of sight around how we're going to influence that wildly important goal. The second thing that it does is it engages every member of the team around the winnable game. And finally, and most important, it allows an organization to achieve its wildly important goal in the midst of a whirlwind. Preview. I hope it made sense. Huh? Now, please, I know this is a business setting, but I want to take it out of a business setting. I want to bring it to your home. How many of us have weekly meetings with our family members about what we want to achieve? Weekly meetings with ourselves as to what we want to achieve. I'll show you some scriptural things quickly. Can you just move? Go to the next slide. We've already, all these are clear because, uh, go, um, yeah, okay, look at this. L let me skip this because I, I, I don't want to start spending time. I want to show you another one. Go on, go on. To, yeah. No, 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 I've missed something. Go back, go back. I wish I was the one controlling this. Just go back, go back, go back. Fine, just go back forward. I'm sorry. I about that. One. Well, 
Why I like this scripture, why I put it there was because whirlwinds are to me are like the rocks and the rain. And you know what I mean? That are descending all of us. But the Bible thing us is that those of us who do what we need to do as per script kind of foundation. I remember there was an illustration that T.D. Jakes gave which really blessed me a lot. He said most, he doesn't think that the soil on which they built was different. He felt that one of them took his time digging his foundation deep while the other one just built on the top of the surface of the you know what I mean of the sun it just built it wasn't that they had different soils because they had to be beside each other for you to be able to compare I don't know if you get the point so one of them spent time digging into the ground saying I want to build a solid foundation it was the same rain the same wind that hit them go to the next slide what's happening go to the next slide all right something's gone off again go on go on go on yeah okay go back go back go back i won't show you this it says therefore we're surrounded with such a great crowd of witnesses let us throw off everything that hinders and sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us in other words it's telling us that this life is going to be full of every kind of distraction there's one i'm looking for in particular let's 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 keep going forward i don't want to really teach this thing from the slides go on and I, he says for instance don't have more than one or two or three goals so the goals you must select must be goals that will move your business or your life forward don't choose a goal like i want to buy a car you know that's not a goal i mean i don't know if you get the point i'm making that should be a side benefit i don't know if you get the point i'm making if you say i'd rather a goal i want to double my income this year i want to triple my income i don't know if you get my point just what i'm because if you triple or quadruple your income you can buy a car so you need to be careful about choosing your roles go on go on and then it says the more you have the more you won't be able to achieve and i have to so we said okay one thing we're going to do this year is have systems in place you know what i mean and we're going to make sure that these systems help us achieve our target and we've been struggling with it for a while and the year is almost coming a goal that makes all the difference all right go on go on go on and failure to achieve this particular goal makes all the other issues inconsequential go on yeah go on go on go on go on it's very similar go on just keep going I'll, 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 these slides are available so please don't don't mind me i'm just this is just for me all right yeah i like this one i like this one especially for me who, who's trying to lose weight it's it's a real issue for me you know what i mean uh because i i found out that when they came up with all these rules and regulations don't eat this don't eat that after a while it became frustrating you go out they say give you something you say you can't eat one i just got angry and said no, it's enough you know it's enough of all this don't eat you can't eat this you can't eat that and then now i'm paying a big price for it you know what i mean so i have to tell my wife if, a few days ago that yeah, i think we better go back to don't eat don't eat this no, and because it was all unconscious i started eating everything i wasn't supposed to eat and guess what now i can go back and say well i want to but i have to change what i eat i don't know if you get the point i'm making that's the one I can control. I have to work on what I can control. I can't do anything about my weight, but I can do something about what I eat and about exercise. I don't know if you get the point he's trying to make. Those are things you want to look at. Go on. Go on. I, I, this is all tight. I, you know, I, I just wanted to show that these things are scriptural. Go on, go on. I'll, I'll come back to it. All right? Yeah, okay. A bodily exercise. Go on, go on, go on. That's not where I'm going to. Go on. I want to go to the next point. Yeah, go back. This is another one. You know, this is what he said. And Pastor Ladon, you'll be able to identify with it because you're a footballer. He says, when you and your friends are playing football in the pitch, practicing, you know what I mean? All of you are just playing around. He says, all of a sudden you say, okay, let's start. Uh, let's start taking scores. He says, all of a sudden you will find out that everybody on the pitch will play differently now. Why? Because there's a goal to achieve. We, we almost miserably walk through life. <laughs> you know, my wife tells me this. She says, if there's no problem in church, I will create it and then I'll go and solve it. You say, why? Because that's what motivates. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. Having something you want to do, a goal you want to reach. You know, I, I delayed my cinema a few months ago and I said, I'm, I'm going to do the cinema. And it's like crazy. You say, why? Well, I'm dreaming about I can come up with too many excuses why I should do it. You get the point I'm making, but it's now become my drive. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. And because I have that goal in mind, 
I'm going to be doing crazy things. But without, so when you drift through life without having anything you want to achieve, especially for your family or for your legacy, your life will be dull, inconsequential. Nobody's going to care. Go on. He says, okay, go on, go on, go on. And, and God told us, listen, always run to win a prize. So don't do running for nothing. Go, go on. I don't want to read all that. Go on, go on. All right? Human beings like games. Make it a winnable game. Go on. All right? I want to go to the next, the last point, okay? Which is, um, yeah, this is the one I think we also don't like. Do you know what I believe Sunday services are? Sunday services are meant to be accountability meetings. I'll show you in a minute. Go, go. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Go, 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 go on. Look at this. Go, go back. Go back one step. This is something that, as a, as a young Christian, people used to knock it over my head. Let us consider one another to, to, to stir up each other to good works. You know what I mean? Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. Every time as a young Christian I was preached to, they always focused on not forsaking the assembly. But that's not what he said. He said that the reason why you assemble together is to do what? Stir each other up in love and to achieve things. You know, God is not, look, God is not as dull as we make him. Prayer is not as dull as we've made it. You know, I, I mean, when, when I was in, I shouldn't tell you where I was. When I was in the redeemed, I can tell you where it was. I better not lie. You know, my, there's a friend of mine, very close friend of mine. He's now in England, he's relocated. He says when him and his friends are, are, are gisting, you know, Holy Ghost, sorry, uh, Holy Ghost service is going on. We're bored by what is going on. So we'll gather together and start to chase. It's a huge ground. Nobody will see you. You know what I mean? So, so we'll be gisting. Then once they say Jew is about to come up and is about to do uh, communion or something, he says the same people he was laughing and playing with, they'll just turn like that. Like, hmm. What is that? I, I see it about us sometimes. You know, let us pray. Hmm. <laughs> Just bow their heads and, and then the voice will change. Oh, omnipotent redeemer. <laughs> he saw you yesterday. You know, when I was in Rama, this is Rama, no, I can blame Rama on this one. I remember we used to, oh, I used to I'm, I'm sorry, the Bible says watch and pray. So I used to keep my eyes open. You know, praise and worship is going on. And this woman, this young girl is pulling, or young boy is pulling his mother's skirt down. You know, mommy, mommy, mommy is pulling. She's just she's worshiping God. She'll just look at him. Bam, bam, and she put her hand back up and be worshiping. And I, 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 I could, my, my mind, my mind couldn't, couldn't comprehend that. Then we used to have this prayer warrior. She was, man, when that girl prays, sweat will be coming out. Anointing will be falling. And she will come off the stage and she will look at you. She's fighting with somebody who will talk to you. And I'll be wondering who told you? Who told you that this is where God lives? He lives in you. Whether if God is not in any place, when you get there, you brought him. Do not if to stir up. The reason why we come together every week is to make sure that we're on track. It's to make sure that we're, we're, we're not giving up. Some of you are tired already. I'm tired. I don't want to teach the four disciplines, but I'm supposed to stir you up because I'm, I've taught it so many times and my own very people reject it. Let's go on. Report on last week's com commitment. Review the Scott, and you'll make commitments for next week. Listen. <laughs> I'm an architect. Where's Gide? Gide doesn't come to church today. So if you come and be Gide number two. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Gide, I've resigned. You are retired. This is him, okay? That is his destination over there. I'm an architect. I'm an architect. I went to school, Uniland. And I didn't pay for it. I worked for it. I graduated. We are very good architects. But if an architect should deviate on a line by one, one degree, most of you won't see it. If I draw a line and I deviate by one degree, most of you won't see it. Your eyes will not be able to perceive it. Now, this is the problem. That is his destination. 
let's assume he deviates by just one degree that's where he's supposed to go for the first few months you won't notice anything different he's still on the red carpet after one year you find that he has left the carpet are you, are you getting my point that's why you have periodic checks in your life that's why i believe you should celebrate your birthday sit down don't make it a party alone sit down and say how far have i gone sit down and say this business you know you know i was telling somebody yesterday i said there's something about us and I'm, 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 I'm guilty of it and pastors most pastors like me are guilty of it we celebrate our little successes and hide our failures in other words i can do an altar call and 200 people can come up and i will lay hands on them and only 10 will get healed and then i will bring those 10 up am i making sense and tell you that god is moving when in any normal school that's a failure you out of 20 out of 20 questions you only you only you only answered 20 out of 200 questions you answer 20 what is that that's the reverse of 80 percent or something or 90 percent what's that i mean it's yeah it's it's, not, it's, it's 10 percent 10 out of 100 is that is that pass mark so we do that we, we come and celebrate I have, when i was in england you know, this guy who got up one day i said when i went to spain or one day i bought a football team and then when i finished buying the football team i called them to one room i took anointing oil and i anointed them and they fought me because they're white they fought me they said uh, we don't do this in our country said, no this is my, you're my team let me anoint you said they didn't lose a football match since then somebody said oh yeah come and go and anoint green eagles go and anoint falcon you can tell all that story over there come and do it here have you noticed that all the miracles happen when you're not around have you noticed that about us we tell you all the fantastic things to do when you're not there but if you sit down and you constantly evaluate I, I prayed for 20 people 200 people 20 people God said what, could I, what do I need to adjust what do I need to I'm, I'm making sense what do I need to learn what, why didn't the why didn't the 80% or 90% of them get healed I will adjust my message adjust my method, method, methodology then I'll get 30 people more saved I don't know if you get the point I make I keep improving myself that's what life is all about they call it Kaizen you keep improving yourself you keep doing something better you keep getting better every single day that's how you execute Let's, let me just go I, I like what he said he said this is something most of, most of you don't know if you don't come to church something else will take your time if you don't have an accountability meeting, something else will take your time. If there's no vacuum in your life. It's what you choose to use that life for that will make a difference in your life. And what this is teaching us is that in the middle of all your whatever, if you don't plan for that house, if you don't plan for that retirement, if you don't plan for, you will never get there because you are waiting for a miracle. One year I got up here and I said, this year my wife and I are going to build a house. I gave everybody a, a sheet in church. I said, we're going to buy a, build a house this year. We didn't succeed that year. We built it the next year, thanks to people who helped us and supported us. But I tell you what, that year, remember, we put it on the table. Pastor Smith went around putting it on every table. Pastor Smith is in Ghana. His daughter graduated yesterday. So congratulations to her. You know, and he put it on the table. Some people looked at the at the goal sheet and turned it upside down and said they were. I said, ah, I said, don't worry, you have just created a goal for yourself. Even though you didn't fill the sheet, you set a goal for yourself. And that goal is nothing. You may not make it as you planned it, but I promise you, you'll be better than somebody who didn't have any plans at all. Most of us have no plans. Now, this is the problem. He says, I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above. And there's something me your brother said, which freaked me out on, on, on Saturday. He said, in any equation, the constants make no difference. It's the variables. 
In other words, if you have a formula, 2x, you know what I mean, is equal to y. The x is the variable. 2 is the constant. He says, it is what you put in that x place that determines your y. And so he's saying, God is the constant. The variable is you. So when he says, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, it means that if you give him 10, he will do 10 times good measure pressed down shaking together and running over he says if you give him one he will do one good measure pressed down shaking together and running over now if you now give him zero he will do zero times good and what's that you are not waiting for him he's waiting for you and i dare tell you this morning you are not anything you want to do in life you are not waiting for god most of you fail to understand that God didn't ask David to build the house for him. God didn't tell the leper to turn back and come and say thank you. God didn't give, God likes it when we initiate things. Why? How many of you are happy when you get home and your children have initiated some good in your house? Before you came back, your daughter cleaned the cobwebs. She rearranged the sitting room, even if she made it more ugly. You are still happy. Why? Because she did what? She took an initiative. Some of you are waiting. God, if, I, if God wants me to do this, he will tell me. Be waiting. The videos are available online, free of charge. No fight. Where's Pastor Sean? I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But if I were you, <laughs> I would set some. No, forget about next year. Guys, I don't care about 2018. You know why? Who knows why? I have to finish 2017 first. I'm not planning for 2019. What am I going to do before the end of this year that will determine what happens to me when? We just sit down and wait. You know, Collins does that to me sometimes and my, some of my staff. Ha, have you called the plumber? Uh, I called him, he didn't answer. I said, but who's suffering? Have you called the mechanic? Uh, I called him, he didn't. I said, but who's suffering? I said, you think the shoe is... No, it's you. I said, did you send him a text? No, I didn't send him a text. Okay. I said, number three, is he the only mechanic in the country? You know, we sit down and wait. It's almost something like a curse. Sitting down waiting. Just waiting. Just waiting. If you are patient, you are waiting on the Lord. That's not waiting on the Lord. That's not waiting on the Lord. Do you know that that word wait is actually similar to the word waitress, waiter. Waiting is serving somebody. It's not sitting down and be looking. Make up your mind today. We're going to continue next week. We'll be simpler next week. We'll go into specific details of each one of them. I don't know how long we can do it because we only have two weeks to go. But the material is available. So it's not as if you need to wait for service to get it. But make up your mind that you're going to be somebody who starts something and finishes it. just bother our hearts and really talk to God this morning. One of the things Reverend Brother said on Thursday was that grace is constant. Grace has already been made available unto all men. So this morning it, it's not about praying for grace because the grace has already been made available is for you to make up your mind this morning 
and speak to yourself because the God factor is constant his word is not going to change the Bible says write the vision make it plain so that he that reads it may run with it one of them Dave Ramsey's book that, that I, was, I was reading said goals are the means by which you transfer your dreams to vision uh, that you actualize your dreams that it goes from dreams to vision then vision to goals and that is how you begin to take steps I remember pastor some uh, some years back showing us of the video of a woman that wrote her goals I think in one of these African countries and put it under a stone and everything that was written on that goal she accomplished that tells you the power of goals that was the scripture says write the vision make it plain so that he that reads it may run with it what are we going to do with this message this morning a lot of us have dreams but until you begin to convert that dreams into written down goals and thank god for this video or for this this the book is also available on how to help you execute your goals the widely important goal to write that goal clearly talk about being, goals being smart the lead measures the lag measures then create a scoring board when you have a scoring board it helps you to to, to celebrate the things you have achieved so that you can achieve more that was scoreboard does in the football match when they score one goal if you are one goal ahead of your opponent it gives you it changes you up when you are level ground it's you still you are still strong but when you are one goal ahead it's gingering you up that you can achieve more that's why you need a scoreboard and the other one says create an accountability group we've talked about you having mentors you having you know people that can hold you accountable i think that is one of the greatest challenge that we have as a nation we don't have nobody holds anybody to accountability and this is something we need to learn to submit ourselves to people to fathers to mentors to pastors so that they can hold us accountable so that we can get to where we want to go to i don't know what you've made up your mind this morning it is exactly seven weeks to the end of this year seven weeks to the end of this year i don't know how much of the goals you wrote at the beginning of the year that has been accomplished right now but god is still a faithful god god is still a faithful god he can still do so much more and those goals can still be accomplished seven weeks is still a lot for god to do And perhaps some of your goals are not the goals that you want to achieve you plan to achieve this year pastor also usually says something he says the way you leave one door or one room is the way you enter into the next how do you want to enter 2018 now is the time to begin to set that goal now is the time to begin to set that goal and to begin to run with it hallelujah father we thank you for your word that has come to us this morning we receive strength to go in this might in the name of jesus 
to begin to clarify our goals to begin to write them down the grace to begin to articulate them down a lot of us have dreams and visions lord will receive the ability to begin to articulate them down into goals that we can achieve per day per week per month per quarters in the name of jesus father we thank you for your word we thank you for your servant that we ask that you what i mean back tremendously in the name of jesus in jesus name we are prayed can we package our tithes and offerings this morning as we give to the lord while we do that please let's listen to the following announcements please is there anybody worshiping with us for the very first time this morning this is your first time at the bridge network hallelujah okay no one uh, our midweek services remains the same and this uh, month we are looking at praying like paul praying like paul please the time remains 5 p.m on wednesday we begin to pray from 5 p.m on wednesday please let's make it a date the lord bless us in jesus name the same wednesday is also our kids and teens vision house and they also are learning about how to pray the theme for the teens and children is prayer walks please let's bring our children and our teams along for that meeting please to all uh, units in church we are asked to uh, like pastor Solomon announced last sunday we are expected to meet in each of the various units and come up with the new unit heads uh sorry ministry heads and assistants and please once you are done forward such names to pastor olumide and the workers meeting for this last workers meeting for this uh, month we hold on the last saturday that's on the 25th of november please let's all plan 